Well, thanks for this uh, opportunity. Yesterday when uh, Dinesh sort of uh, said that maybe I should uh, speak a few words, I was, my first reaction was uh, I was slightly hesitant because in this uh, gathering of experts who are uh, debating and discussing socio-political contexts and uh, policies and implementation issues, uh, I didn't know how somebody working in physics would fit in. So, uh, but uh, sleeping overnight, I thought maybe I could share some experiences and for whatever they are worth. Uh, a few words about myself because I think they'll put everything I've done into context. That uh, I've been fortunate enough to have had the opportunity of working in experimental physics, theoretical physics, computational physics, and uh, after about uh, 25 years of research uh, work in basic uh, physics, uh, what I had always wanted to do was uh, staring in my face, and that was, could I do something uh, which could immediately be applied uh, to uh, uh, the society at large? And that was always at the back of my mind, as I said. And, uh, but I was totally unsure as to how somebody who had worked in basic physics uh, would be able to contribute in that sense to develop something which would actually be usable uh, in the form of a product or process or whatever. And there was no other way than to just prove it to myself. So I worked with industry for about five years, uh, produced uh, a few products, worked for the Delhi Metro and so on. And that gave us the confidence that yes, we could do it. So, uh, but then after that, it was just a matter of chance or uh, a few incidents which brought me uh, close to uh, uh, looking at the problems of uh, medical instrumentation. And uh, the few issues that were at the, that, occurred to me were like this. One, if I looked at medical instrumentation, one was that in a country like India, obviously the problems are well known. It's very poor doctor to patient ratio, very low paying capacity of the masses. And then if I looked at uh, even basic monitoring equipment, uh, most of it is still imported. I opened up a few of them and found that uh, the technology being used were uh, more often than not, uh, maybe a decade or, uh, or older than that. And if one were to design that with uh, modern electronics and IT, not only one would be able to reduce the costs tremendously, but also get instruments which are much more efficient. So that was one. And uh, the costs, as I could see, were very high because of uh, because all these instruments were coming from the West, the developmental costs are extremely high. And most of it is uh, just uh, cost of the intellectual property. Okay, so that was one thing. The second, which was at that time seemingly totally unrelated, was uh, uh, even my own student days, that the kind of work that uh, we were doing as uh, lab projects or experimental work as students was totally boring. I mean, it was uh, projects uh, repeated ad nauseum over semesters, years, and whatnot. And um, suddenly it occurred to me that maybe one could, I could put two together and do something about it. So uh, yesterday we heard Anil Gupta about uh, uh, this uh, distributed knowledge creation model, uh, where uh, this wonderful uh, effort of techpedia.in, where there's a database of a uh, huge number of 100,000 projects, and he said that we have about a million uh, uh, engineering students per year. So uh, what I did was I put together, in addition to that, added a new dimension to it, which was could we also have a distributed model for development? So what I did uh, was that uh, I took up for example, just, this is one example, an ECG machine. And then I said, uh, let's cut down the cost. And what are the factors that go in? So the developmental cost could be lowered 
aside from redesigning and everything which goes in, uh, by involving a large number of students. So the whole task divided up into various uh, small modules. And I uh, used to hold a one-day workshop at NPL, where I would, just by word of mouth, I was getting about two to 300 students. Uh, I couldn't handle more, so we never advertised it. And uh, so one-day workshop, I would just tell them about uh, the philosophy and the objectives of the exercise we were trying to do. Tell them also about the kind of things technically we were trying to do a little bit. And then in the later years, have the senior students who had worked with us tell them about their experiences. And just my whole message in one sentence was that, look, okay, with, with your current level of knowledge and expertise, there's a lot you can do. You can contribute. And just the gleam in their eyes was worth the whole effort, you know, just for them to realize that, yes, they could uh, do things and, uh, much more meaningfully. So all this was uh, posted on a website, and all these students just uh, made groups amongst themselves from various uh, colleges in the Delhi area, and uh, just volunteered to do this. And then uh, we would actually choose some of these groups, and then uh, just give them these modules. Maybe not even just one group per module, maybe several groups per module, and whosoever delivered the best solution uh, the integration is something we kept in our hands because students can't deliver things at a polished level where these are all integrable and can really form a product. So that we would do at our place, uh, at NPL itself. And these students were uh, free to come on Saturdays or holidays or even uh, during the weekdays to come and interact with us. So I would say this model has worked uh, reasonably successfully. And um, uh, here is... Just one such example, which is right here. This is a full 12 lead ECG, about 200, 250 grams. It just uh, plugs into a, a, a USB port of a PC. And it's totally self-calibrating. And uh, the records obviously get stored on the computer. They can be emailed or whatever. And, uh, and there are several things in pipeline. So. Uh, and I have uh, some flyers here those, for those of you who are interested can pick these up. Now, the next question is, which is uh, itself a very challenging task now. In India, particularly this interface, uh, I've, I still feel that converting science technology that the students do, or us engineers and scientists do, into products is still weak. Once we have something working on the bench in the lab, scientists often find it more intellectually, more uh, just uh, satisfying to just move on to the next problem. And, these, and there are, I'm sure there are a huge number of such innovations lying on the benches of uh, R&D institutions in India, which are uh, potentially uh, useful. But uh, that interface is not there. And I personally believe that in the short run, it is only us scientists and engineers who have to walk the extra mile. Because if you are talking about MSME sector and so on, because uh, very large companies have very high overheads. They will not be able to deliver solutions which are usable uh, by the common masses because of their extremely low paying capacity. So if you think about the MSME, MSME sector and so on, they don't have the wherewithal or uh, the setup to productize these ideas. So in the short run, at least, I, I say that it is only us scientists and engineers who have to walk the extra mile and take up that challenging task of productization. Uh, so uh, interestingly, yesterday we talked about only about uh, engineering students, just half a minute more. We did involve students from the management institutes who did the market survey. The flyers and everything has been designed by fashion technology institutes. So there is this additional dimension that we can involve students from other streams also. And uh, in, in a, this is truly collective effort. Uh, so this is uh, in addition to what we heard about innovation models. Uh, how do we productize is another question. And here is uh, one such ex small example of uh, distributed development. And uh, obviously, this is a small exercise. 
whether it will scale linearly and so on, that's uh, not clear at all. But we are trying to make efforts in that area now. Thank you very much for the opportunity.